morning is so yesterday we completed this right so what are the reasons for doing performance testing for an already existing application right yes already existing application means something which is already in production isn't it let me open your batch tracker as well now today let's understand like what are the what are the reasons for doing or how do we do performance testing for a newly built application so what are the use cases or what are the scenarios in which we do performance testing what are the reasons for doing performance testing for a newly developed application right so the first and foremost reason is to assess the readiness of production environment to assess the readiness of production environment it determine the user load capacity of the existing system right so how many user loads can the application support right how many user load how many users can the application support and how ready is it for production environment how ready is it to go live so that is the first and foremost reason for doing performance testing for a newly built application right and then compare performance characteristics with different system configurations compare performance characteristics with different system configurations yesterday we discussed what is meant by yesterday or day before yesterday session right we discussed what is meant by system configuration right so what is meant by system configuration is cpu memory capacity of course. what generation we have what generation computer we have so no system configuration means uh, cpu memory only cpu memory that means only hardware configuration In the software configuration also uh, operating is system supporting the uh, OS or not and uh, this it is accessible. right so not only hardware configuration software configuration as well right software configuration also matters a lot so if you want to compare the performance characteristics how is the performance with different system configuration with different hardware configuration as well as software configuration clear please so most of the servers most of the applications will be running on linux boxes right the reason is like windows you know why not windows so i made a statement saying that most of the applications will be running on linux servers and why not windows so if you see server market share server market share with linux versus windows okay so this is not server market share so i'll show you server statistics so this is not server market share this okay windows grew from 72 to 71.92 so this is normal you know systems uh, your you know laptops or desktops uh, for home purpose now what is the market share which server operating system has the largest market share yes total operating system now again this is this is again microsoft server was the market leader uh, yeah here you can see linux versus windows use a statistic july 2023 right linux is used by 38% of all the websites whose operating system we know of all the websites whose operating system we know Linux is used by 46% of the all the websites. So most of the servers will be running on Linux boxes, as you can see here. Clear this. Why not Windows? Why Linux? Yes, anyone? So, so maybe your Linux Windows market share. Huh. So Windows is only like you know half of Linux market share. You see here, right? This is a 18.7 percent, and Linux has a market share of 38 percent. So Linux is more efficient, more secure compared to Windows, right? So Windows is a good operating system for home users, normal users. Okay. However, so Linux, you know, is more efficient or more, more efficient and uh, than Windows operating system. Clear this? So for multi-user and multitasking, right? So Linux is the more efficient operating system for servers. Clear this? 
okay again this is a huge topic so you know about unix and linux architecture and all you know this is again a huge topic so we'll discuss this linux so linux knowledge is required this is the reason why linux knowledge is required basic linux knowledge is required and we will discuss that uh, you know like in the last two, second month right in the second month we will discuss that okay so for now remember that you know most of the servers will be running on linux operating system okay and again in linux also we have different flavors of linux different flavors of linux are there like ubuntu linux suse linux red hat enterprise linux debian linux and you need not be an expert in linux guys don't worry about this so those who are you know from non computers background need not worry about this okay because you know you need not be an expert in linux you, you should uh, you should know at least basics of linux or li basic linux commands and i will explain you i will help you like you know what are the basic linux commands required for attending an interview first and cracking an interview on your own all right now so coming back to this so compare the performance characteristics with different uh, system configurations okay and one one last thing so before going to back so you may you know you need not have a linux operating system on your machine as well there are some free websites for learning linux so can everyone go to this website like webminal.org and bookmark this website guys please go through go to this website webminal.org okay and bookmark this website and recently very recently i made one session on this webminal.org how to use this webminal.org and it is available as a public video on my youtube channel so let me quickly show you then yes so this is the first session guys linux session 1 free training how to make take free training using webminal website and wsl so uh, till now i have recorded two sessions on this uh, to help you learn linux commands for beginners right this is for beginners guys okay webminal website is for beginners and then wsl is wsl is for intermediate users all right so what is wsl and all so you know please go through this recorded session i'll share the link in the whatsapp group as well and for now please go through this please go to this website guys everyone go to webminal.org and bookmark the website right once you bookmark the website click on register and enter your username email id password and you will get an activation link one once you click on register you will get an activation link as i explained here so to create a new account fill in the below form an activation link will be sent to the registered email for verification once you register you will be able to log in by clicking here right so i am logging into my account so if, and you see this you know message called you have been logged in a confirmation message saying you have been logged in so once you log in click on this terminal right click on the terminal and again you need to enter the username and password here first you need to enter your username here whatever username you have created when registering your, your account when creating an account you need to enter the username and password over here again now if you see this dollar prompt that confirms that you logged into a linux shell clear guys in windows we call you know command prompt right so here in linux we call it as a shell now once you log in right so if you see if you look at the right side there is a drop down in which you have around 20 lessons isn't it and all these lessons will have basic basic linux commands so just in, and you will have a description of each linux command as well for example pwd is for present working directory or current working directory right clear this so you know you can practice that command over here so go lesson by lesson i have chosen lesson 1 the first command is pwd where pwd stands for current working directory or present working directory clear this now type pwd here so it will and hit enter now it will show you in which directory we are currently isn't it so if you type date here it will show you the current date and time 
or if you show if you type who am i it will show you the username with which you logged in right this is the username the with which i logged in isn't it so and you know if you want to create a directory you can use this command mkdir mk for make dir for directory and what is a directory directory is nothing but a anyone most folder. of you may be knowing this already yes nothing but a folder nothing but a folder in windows we call that as a folder right we call these as folders isn't it in linux we call that as directories so mkdir is to create a directory understood yes and dir1 is the directory name right so you can simply practice these commands no need of joining any paid training for this so if you are interested to learn right you can simply practice this linux commands and keep this uh, keep this you know linux in your skill set you can keep linux in your skill set clear guys so no matter you know so how many profiles they may be having if the interviewer sees your uh, sql and linux in your cv right so lodener and jmeter anyone will learn and keep right so that that is what most of the training institutes have trainers cover however you know if you have some basic knowledge on sql and linux your there are more chances of your cv getting shortlisted and if you can answer some basic linux queries and sql queries there are 100% chances that you will be selected okay you will be seriously considered for the position so please you know please create an account on this webminal.org you need not install any operating system right so without installing any linux operating system you can practice linux commands wonderful right by using a free account okay hey sir you am i audible guys yes uh, yes problem yes uh yeah so why should we learn linux separately is it is non gm mode yes right it's non uh, like you know it doesn't most of the linux servers doesn't have a gui what is meant by gui graphical user graphical user right so this is gui this is called gui right we call this as gui graphical user interface only ubuntu linux will have a gui like this there is one flavor of linux as far as i, I know uh, there is one this ubuntu linux will have a gui again it has a non gui also the rest of it has in our weeks all right so when you say like uh, compare performance characteristics with different system configurations yes so application may be tested on different flavors of linux and different uh, system configurations hardware and soft both hardware and software configurations and the next reason is like uh, if you observe here i have i gave some color coding here right so these are the important you know reasons for doing performance testing for a newly developed application whatever are marked in this color right so those are important you know uh, major reasons for doing performance testing for a newly developed application and another reason is support the application tuning or system tuning system or application tuning now what is meant by tuning application tuning or system tuning so system or application both are same guys by the way okay right? so system or tuning both are same now what is meant by system tuning or application tuning doing the modifications what is it doing the modification all right so adjusting the application or do adjusting the system configuration and trying to get the optimum performance right that is called as tuning clear guys so suppose you you know suppose you are not getting a good mileage from your bike or car right from your vehicle you are not getting good mileage from your bike uh, from your bike let's assume that you are not getting a good mileage from your bike so you say to, to the technician the same thing and you know he do he does something called so if the vehicle is properly serviced right so he does something called engine tuning yes or no yes anyone know this case he will adjust the yes. engine beating right to give you good performance good mileage isn't it so in the same way so we can you know we can play around with the application settings and try to get the optimal performance from the application so that is called as system tuning clear guys 
and uh, that is another reason for doing performance testing for a newly developed application and creating benchmark for feature systems creating benchmark for feature systems now what is meant by a benchmark so there is a concept called benchmark testing and baseline testing benchmark and and baseline testing we will discuss this you know later on but there is a concept called in performance testing there is a concept called benchmark testing and baseline testing so benchmark testing means initial performance what is the initial performance of the application that is called as benchmark testing so to help you understand what is benchmark testing right i have you know let us take some example from our tollywood uh, industry right um so our telugu director rajmouli has set a benchmark in the film industry what is that benchmark that he has set that he has set Hundred crore. But he has set a benchmark of hundred crores collection in how many days? In three days. Yeah. For the first time, you know, his movie collected hundred crores in three days. That is one benchmark set by Rajmouli, right? Thereafter, everyone is you know comparing with that benchmark, isn't it? Hundred crores club, right? They started saying that you know. this film has reached 100 crores club in these many days isn't it sir no guys yes right so he has set a benchmark like this right we will discuss this we will discuss benchmark and what is baseline we will discuss that you know once the scripting is completed we will discuss that for every release we will take a baseline every release or sprint we will take a baseline we will consider a successful test as a base baseline for that sprint okay we will discuss this we will revisit this again you know once the scripting is completed right so benchmark means means something you know which is set as a record or some initial performance clear guys so to do to create benchmark for the future systems what is meant by future systems yesterday we discussed that application development is an ongoing process right yes sir no it's an ongoing yes. continuous process right as yes. far as there is development uh, there will be testing right now feature systems means so suppose you know let's say you mean an application was developed recently that is there is a newly developed application and now that application will be subjected to lot of improvements right lot of improvements modifications new features will be added new functionality will be added that is what feature system means for that application so we will first you know as soon as it is developed we'll create a benchmark to compare with the feature releases feature releases clear guys yes is it clear or no what is meant by creating benchmark for feature system what is meant by feature system first of all the application developed newly today it will be subjected to lot of you know, performance improvements feature of uh, feature additions new features will will be added right so we need to create some benchmark in the beginning so that you know every time some feature will uh, will compare it, we can compare it with the initial performance of the application okay so for now remember that benchmark means initial performance of an application next step guys are you able to follow or any difficulty guys guys please speak out guys say yes, sir no yeah we are able to follow we say, are able sir no yes, or sir. don't know now next one is compare performance uh, compare up the application performance on multiple platforms right we discussed just now right there are different flavors of linux and these are the different flavors of linux again in linux you know red hat enterprise the linux will have major majority of the market share majority of the market share goes to this operating system rhel rel red where this stands for red hat enterprise linux and then you have centos fedora suse ubuntu linux 
etcetera etcetera right most of the servers or most of the applications will be using red hat enterprise linux okay and next so we may need to you know client may need to compare the performance on multiple platforms which one will give better performance isn't it so for that you know they will deploy the application on each operating system and they may do performance testing that is another scenario or that is another use case where we need to do performance testing for any application okay and validate any application against its performance criteria another important point actually this is another important point okay the power ones yes uh, the second and fifth point are both are same second both with the different system configurations on different hmm. on multiple platforms no see when i say so, system configuration right it can be software con configuration as well okay right? so software configuration means not only operating system so there will be different settings also different uh, you know application settings as well okay so number of connections number of threads for the application there will be a lot of you know system configurations software configurations understood so this one and this one is not same both are not same okay so another important point is validate the application against its performance criteria now this is important to understand what is meant by performance criteria so to understand this we'll take some example anyone having a enfield guys enfield by yes is this kalyan kalyan okay nice so how much cc is that 350 350 so okay which one is this royal enfield isn't yes. it yes and again there are different uh, brand or uh, different models right what is which model is that thunderbird what is it himalayan thunderbird himalayan okay anyways so mm -hmm. it's a 350 cc bike now it will have some performance criteria right some performance criteria will be there right it should reach some 100 kilometers per hour in how many seconds yes ha huh? it will have some performance criteria right so what and what is the cost of that by the way 2 lakhs 2.3 2.3 2.3 lakh yeah okay nice wonderful so why you know why do why does anyone spend this much amount for a bike because you know it has some performance criteria it will reach 100 kilometers per hour in 3 seconds or 4 seconds isn't it yes sir no Yes. Is that no guys? Yes. That's why people will go for that, isn't it? And it has you know lot of ride stability, even at this high speed also, isn't it? And what is the maximum speed that it can reach? Yeah. Have you ever tested that, uh, Kalyan? One twenty. One twenty. Only one twenty? Yes. Yes. Thunderbolt will go like that. No plastic uh, thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Okay. so any other bike which uh, has you know 200 km speed which can you know go to 200 km speed or okay ktm ha ha ktm we have right ktm around by okay right so it this has some performance criteria like this right it can you know moreover the ride will be very stable even at this speed isn't it even at 120 km per hour you will not feel that you are going at 120 km per hour speed isn't it and it can reach that uh, speed in 3 to 4 seconds max so this is the performance criteria for this uh, for that particular product isn't it so in the same way any software application will have some performance criteria like for you know if it is a web application or a mobile application or a right if it is a web or a mobile application they will have some performance criterias like this they should support you know some 50000 users or 1 lakh users 50000 50k users user load they should support 50000 user load i'm just giving some examples only guys okay or you know they should be able to process some 2000 transactions per second 2 1000 or 2000 transactions per second i'm just giving some examples that's it okay 
2000 transactions per second. Okay, let me write it down. Otherwise, you know, there is a great chance that you will get confused. So an application can submit, you know, these are some of the performance criteria of web or mobile application. Or, you know, response time should be less than, you know, three seconds. Response time should be less than three seconds for any page. These are some performance criteria for the web or mobile application. Web or mobile app, sorry. Uh, you know? mobile app okay these are the performance criteria for some of the applications these are examples of performance criteria now understood what is meant by performance criteria it is yeah yes, yes now to validate you know any application against its performance criteria each application will have its own performance criteria when an application is being developed right they keep some performance criteria in mind and they will develop the application they will design the application and develop the application Right, and to validate the application against its performance criteria, also we do this performance testing whether the application is supporting 50,000 users or not, whether the application is able to process these many transactions per second or not, or whether you know response times are less than three seconds or not. Right, there can be different examples and number of examples like this. Clear, guys? So, this is what I mean to say by performance criteria. Okay, and I think we already discussed this now. Next one is uncover what components of an application suffer poor performance and under what conditions. Uncover what components of an application. What is meant by a component? What is the general meaning of a component, guys? Part. Part of something. A small part of something is called as a component, isn't it? A part or element of a larger whole. Part of a ma machine or a vehicle. Right? That is the general meaning of component. Now, what is the, what are the components of an application? What are the application components, right? Application means web application or a mobile application. Web application like IRCDC, ICSABank.com, HDFCBank.com, or online SBA.com, right? So these are the different applications, web application, Amazon.in, Flipkart.com, right? These are the different applications that we know or we are using. Now, any application will have any web application or a mobile application, let's take web application, let's not go to mobile apps that may be having a different architecture. So if you take any web application, right, it will have different components like this. Let me use Spotlight. So we users may be using different browsers like Internet Explorer or Firefox or a Chrome browser or an Edge browser, right? And you know, when users are accessing the application, right, your request will first go to this from the browser, it will first go to a component called web server, right? And then any application will have different servers like web components like web server, application server, and database server. So this is a typical, you know, three-tier application architecture, architecture of a web application. Clear guys? This is the most common architecture widely deployed, right? So any application will have some, you know, different components called web server app server and db server and in between or in front of these servers there is something called load balancer isn't it load balancer you know that's the name implies it balances the load what is meant by load here users login Number user, of load. User. User. user load basically when thousands or lakhs of users are accessing the application right it will balance that user load across all the servers it will distribute the load across all the servers. In the same way, here also, you know, it will distribute the load across all the app servers and DB servers, right? So this is a typical three-tier application architecture, web, a typical web application architecture. A typical means common web application architecture, okay? And now, what are the different components of this architecture? You have a load balancer, you have web server, application server, again, another load balancer and database server. These are the different components. Now, if your application performance, let's assume that your application performance is not good, right? There may be n number of reasons for this, for poor performance. Suppose if your web, one of the web servers is not working, has some issue, or one of the application servers is having some issue, or load balancer is having some issue, right? There can be n number of reasons, or you know, database queries are taking more time, right? So, 
to uncover which component is giving poor performance, causing poor performance, and what is the reason for that, right? So to do that also, we do this performance testing. Clear this? So to uncover means to find out what components on a, of an application suffer poor performance and under what conditions, when it is giving that poor performance, under which load it is giving poor performance. Clear guys? Is it clear guys? Yes, yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And to find any performance bottlenecks or performance issues. To find any performance bottlenecks or performance issues, right? For, all, for that also, we do performance testing for a newly developed application. Clear this? So these are the reasons are, you know, this is applicable for even for an existing application as well. Some of these are applicable for even an existing application as well. Clear this? So these are the reasons for doing performance testing. These are the different reasons for doing performance testing. There may be few more reasons also. This is not an exhaustive list. This is not a complete list. But these are the major reasons for doing performance testing. So I'll take a pause here. So to address any queries, do you have any anyone having any, any queries? If you don't have any queries, we'll move to the next slide. Yes. What are the different types of performance testing? Yes, is it interesting or boring or feeling difficult? Yes, please respond, guys. Very easy to understand. Interesting. Interesting, easy to understand. Okay, thank you. Okay. So it will be more interesting once we start scripting, right? It will be more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Bhavana. What's your query? Bhavana, you sent a message in the Zoom chat, right? So when did you send that? 8.41, just now. What is your query, Bhavana? Uh, we can't hear you if you are speaking. You are on mute, Bhavana. Okay, maybe some audio issue. So, shall, you know, we will see that in the lab once our audio issue is fixed. Okay, now let's move on. Move on to the next slide. What are the types of performance testing? Another interesting concept and very important you know, concept for interviews. Okay, what are the different types of performance testing? And if you observe, you know, I am using this logo for my YouTube channel as well as my WhatsApp group, right? Did you observe that, guys? How many of you have seen that, guys? I'm yes, sir. The same, same logo for my YouTube channel as well as uh, my WhatsApp groups, right? WhatsApp groups in which you are added, isn't it? So that logo cons consists of the important types of performance testing, isn't it? Let me go to the slideshow mode. So the first and foremost type of testing is load testing. First important type of testing is load testing. And then you have endurance testing, SOC or endurance testing, and then volume testing, scalability testing, spike testing, and stress testing. So these are the different important types of performance testing, right? Now let's see one by one, what is the, you know, why do we have these many types of testing and what is the significance of each of them? What is the importance of each type of performance testing, right? So the first and foremost one is load testing. And load testing is something which we do with expected or normal user load for one to two hours. Load testing is something which we do with expected user load or normal user load for one to two hours. So benchmark and baseline I'll give, I'll, you know, I already mentioned that we'll revisit those uh, Bhavana. Okay, we'll revisit those. So as we have a lot of people from non computers background, so I'll follow a certain sequence in which I want to explain. So we'll discuss that later. It's a bit early to discuss that now. Okay. So load testing is something which we do with expected user load or normal user load for one to two hours. Clear this? Expected or normal user load means, yesterday we discussed it, right? So what is the normal user load on IRCDC application? We discussed that it is with be one lakh users. So if you are testing IRCDC application, you need to test with at least one lakh users for one to two hours, right? So that is the expected or normal user. Now, what is endurance test? The next type of testing is SOAP or endurance test. See, read it as an R. Read this slash as R, okay? This one. SOAP or endurance test. So 
soap test or endurance test means long duration test some people call it as longevity test also right some people call it as longevity test or long duration test and how long it is depends on the business hours of the application we'll discuss that in the next slide for now remember that soak or endurance test means long duration test the, and not all applications require all these types of testing every application doesn't require all these types of testing okay and we need to decide which application requires which type of testing by understanding the application clear guys we need to decide our performance testing team should decide which testing is required for which application and which testing is not required for any for some application clear guys and we will understand that soon you, you will you know you will also be is easily able to define that right now the next type of testing is stress testing so stress means what is the meaning of stress guys what is the general meaning of stress pressure lot of pressure lot of pressure right so more than normal isn't it stress means more than something that is normal so stress testing is testing an application with normal load on the application more than normal load on the application and which applications require stress testing for example if you have a travel application like a irctc or you know apsrtc or tsrtc or red bus application so whenever there is so assume that let's assume that you know on a normal day they will be having some 1 lakh users but whenever there is a festival or a vacation there will be more number of users right yes or whenever you know if you take any e-commerce application so whenever there is a festival more users you know place lot of users will be placing more orders right whenever there is a festival or an occasion isn't it whenever there is you know some festival like christmas or new year right or dasara isn't it so you'll have more number of users placing orders isn't it so only those kind of applications require stress testing understood this every application doesn't require stress testing that is why if you observe here again you know i have highlighted this first two because these two types of testing are important for any application any applications require load testing and soak testing however the other types of testing are not required for all the applications only some applications require you know some applications require this stress testing and spike testing and this volume testing understood guys yes. right now let's uh, let's understand the other types of testing the next type of testing is spike testing so which applications require spike testing right so for example if you take irctc application so whenever there is a tatkal booking right what happens whenever there is a tatkal booking guys whenever a tatkal window opens what happens more users will come more users at a same point of time right there will yes. be a sudden increase in the user load yes or no there will be a big spike in the user load isn't it yes sir 10 to 10 15 i think tatkal windows are you know two there are two tatkal windows one at 10 o'clock and the other one at 11 o'clock am i correct yes sir right so as soon as 10 o'clock happens right users will be ready before itself they will log into the application and they will be ready to couple of minutes before itself isn't it and as soon as the tatkal window opens every user will try to book their ticket isn't it and now there will be a sudden surge in the user load than normal load isn't it and what is the meaning of a spike that is the meaning of a spike right what is the meaning of a spike or surge spike or surge what is the meaning guys sudden increase a sudden increase is called as a spike right a sharp increase in the magnitude or concentration of something right so these kind of applications require spike testing as well along with load testing and stress testing and you know uh, load testing soak testing and stress testing this the irctc kind of applications travel applications are amazon or flipkart they require spike testing as well they require stress testing as well as spike testing amazon or flipkart applications because we know this scenario also whenever there is a big billion sale or a flash sale right there will be a sudden increase in the user load right yes sir no guys on e commerce application yes right? yes so these applications require spike testing as well guys i need your complete attention i i am going to ask i am going to show some 
graphs, some you know graphs in the next slides, and you need to identify what type of testing is that. The next two, four to five slides are will be very interesting. These four to five, you need to identify what type of uh, you know what type of test does each graph best represents. Once this is once I explain this, once I complete this, okay. The next type of testing is volume testing. Volume testing means it is a load testing with expected load and huge volume of data in the database. It is something which we do with expected load, normal load on the application, but huge volume of data in the database. That type of testing is called as volume testing. Again, we will revisit these, you know, different types of testing in the coming up sessions. Okay. For now, understand, you know, for now, understand and remember what are the different types of performance testing and which application requires which type of testing. And the next type of testing is scalability testing. Scalability means testing an application to verify how much it can scale. What is meant by scale? How much it can scale? Right? This is love. Yes. How many users can it support? I think yesterday we discussed that, right? Uh, with Kotak Mahindra Bank example. Whenever there is increase in the users, number of users, we have to test the application whether the application can scale or not. Scale up or not, right? Means scalability testing is testing an application for future load. Scalability testing is testing an application for future user load. And there are few more PT test types, performance testing types, right? PT stands for performance testing, yes, by the way, right? So another type of testing is failover testing and capacity testing. There are a couple of other testings as well. Okay. We will discuss that, you know, in the coming up sessions, but these are the important types of, you know, majority of the performance testing types, right? Uh, there are few more called failover testing and capacity testing. Okay. I'll explain this failover testing and capacity testing with very good examples. Okay. So failover testing, we'll discuss, you know, in detail, but, you know, for now, remember that these are the, there are different types of performance testing and nothing to worry. Every application doesn't require all these types of testing. Okay. Some are based on the type of the application we need to decide or we can de define what type of testing does an application require. Right. Based on the requirement, we do different types of testing. Is it clear, guys? Any queries here? Sir, so scalable testing and capacity testing both are same, sir. Looks same, right? We'll discuss that. We'll discuss that in the coming up session. Okay. So hold on this. Capacity planning the test. Okay. Let me correct it. So this yes, these are misleading. One second. I'll name it as you know capacity planning test. I'll explain what is meant by capacity planning. What is the this the scalability testing? We'll, I'll explain that in the coming up sessions. Okay, but there is a difference. Yeah. Any other queries? We we'll move to the next slide, guys. So in the the next two slides, I explained all these types of testing in detail. Okay, I explained all these types of testing in detail. We'll discuss that in tomorrow's session. It will take, you know, as we are, we have only seven more minutes. Uh, okay. So we'll discuss these in the next session. Now I'll show you some graphs and you need to identify what type of testing does each graph represents, best represents, based on this, you know, based on the last five minutes, 10 minutes of discussion. Okay. Ready for that? Yes. Or you want me to, you know, you want me to ask those once we complete this one. Not required, you know. Let us see. Let's see again. We will revisit this. Now, what type of testing does this graph represent? Okay. Before that, you know, please wait, please wait. So, before that, let me explain something. Let me explain, you know, let me explain the graph, right? So, this is called as x axis. You in your college or school, you might have drawn different graphs, right? Do you remember that drawing any graphs? Yes, Paul. Right. We will recollect that. We will recollect that again. So we call this as x axis, right? And what is this called as? Y axis. Y axis. And on x axis, you have test duration, right? If you observe here, test time is represented on x axis and number of virtual users. 
or user load on the application. User load on the application is, is represented on Y axis. Clear guys? And now let's assume that this is the normal user load. See this line from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. This is the normal user load on the application. Now tell me what type of test that does this graph best represents? Spike test. Spike, spike. spike test. Spike. Spike testing, wonderful, right? So there is one spike here. There is sudden increase in user load over here. Isn't it? There is one spike over here for shorter duration, right? That spike ended for some shorter duration. Again, you know, the user load became normal. And uh, this graph best represents, you know, Tatkal booking, right? For IRCTC application, right? There, there will be two, two Tatkal windows open, open, isn't it? Per day, daily, isn't it? So, of course, this graph represents spike testing. Okay. Leave about that, you know, IRCT's example. This graph best represents spike testing, right? That is what we are discussing. What type of test is this? Now, in interviews, they will not show you graphs. Please remember, they will not show you graphs. They may not be having these images. Okay. They will ask you to draw the graph. Please remember that. Understood, guys? They will ask you to draw the graph for a load test or a spike test. They may ask you to draw a graph and explain that graph here guys and that is the reason you know like i have because they may not be having these images i have collected this i have prepared these images with a lot of effort okay now so let's move on to the next slide so what type of and uh, first you know before that let me explain so here one you see here over here what is this tilde symbol you see some symbol over here right let me go to the slide show more so that it will be Long more clearly visible. One hour. Long Long what is the what is the meaning of that tilde symbol? Approximate. Approximate. Perfect. Right. Until the time. One H means yeah. one, hour. one hour. Now, what type of test that does this graph best represent? Load test. Load test. Load test. Right. We discussed just now that you know load test is something which we do with expected or normal user load for one to two hours. Perfect. Right. And what is this one? What is this and what is this? You know, you see. Okay, let me explain. Ramp up. Yeah. Ramp up and ramp down. Ramp up. And right. So this is called as ramp up period. Ramp up period means we are increasing the user load on the application. That period is called as ramp up period. A ramp up. Right. So I'll write it down in your class notes. What is meant by ramp up period, guys? Increasing, increasing of the user load. So in gradually increasing user load on the application is called as ramping up. Ramping. On application that is called as ramp up period. And the next, you know, straight line represents steady state. Steady state means no change in the user load, right? No change in the user load. During that period, there will be no change in the user load. And the next line represents ramp down. Ramp down means obviously decreasing the user load, right? Now let me go to the slide, right? So this graph, you know, like in this graph or in this diagram, so. Hold on. This is this represents ramp up. We are increasing the user load on the application and maintain steady state for certain time, some time. And then we slowly ramp down the users and see the application behavior when there is expected user load. This is the expected user load on the application. What is the application behavior with normal user load on the application? Right? So this graph best represents a load test. Load test. Right. And then what does this graph represent? Now you should be able to understand, like, you know, what, what are we doing here and what type of test is this? Capacity. Stress. Stress. Mm, shall we Capacity. say stress test? Stress test. Yeah. So this graph best represents a stress test, right? So we are gradually increasing the user load, right? And what is the objective of doing this stress test is to find out the application's breaking point. What is the objective of doing this? So each test has a different purpose, guys. Why do we have these many tests? Each test has a different purpose. And what is the purpose of this test testing? So we are gradually increasing the user load till the application breaks down. 
and that is the that is the objective of doing a stress testing at what user load the application breaks down it will stop responding or we'll see start seeing errors right we are gradually increasing the user load maintaining steady state okay increasing user load again and maintaining steady state let's say assume that you know this number represents you know let's say we increased first 2000 users here let's say assume that this is 1000 user load okay and we are maintaining that 1000 user load for some time and again we are increasing the users to let's say assume 2000 users let's say assume that you know we increase the users to 2000 user load here and see how is the application behavior with 2000 user load. If it is good, right? Then we increase the user load to 3000 users next. I'm just giving example number space, okay? So it can be 2000 or 20,000, uh, but I'm just giving some examples, right? Now let's say assume that this is 3000 user load. Now we will test the application behavior for some time. We maintain a steady state and see the application behavior. If it is responding good, then we further increase further um, further user load. Right? At some point, it may break up. At some point, you know, we may start seeing some errors. Right? We may start seeing errors, or you we, we may start you know seeing high response times. Then we understand we understand that you know that is a breaking point of the application. Let's say at five thousand user load, your application started throwing errors, or it is not responding. Response times are very high. Right? Then we understand that you know 5000 is the maximum user load that it can support or 5000 is the maximum user load that it supports before it breaks down, right? Clear guys? That is a breaking point of the application. Clear guys? So this graph best represents a stress test. And what does this graph, hold on, sorry. So what does this, you know, what does this graph represents? Endurance. So, okay. right. so okay. endurance test because uh, the time is represented as five hours here, isn't it? They're representing, you know, the time is being represented as five hours approximately. So this graph best represents a endurance test or soak test or longevity test, right? So car endurance or longevity. Both all are one and same. So car endurance. Or longevity test. Clear this long duration test. And now, what does this graph represents? Observe here on x axis, we have always represent test duration. And on y axis, you know, there is a change in the metric here. So, in the on y axis in this diagram, we are representing, I have represented data quantity. So, what does this graph best represent? Volume, volume, volume testing. Volume testing. So volume testing is something we discussed just now. Volume testing is something which we do with huge amount of volume data. of data in the database, right? And why do we do that volume testing and all? We'll discuss that in tomorrow's session. What is the significance of each type of testing? And why do we do different types of testing, right? We'll discuss in thoroughly or we'll discuss, uh, you know, in depth in the next session. I'll stop it here, guys. Any queries for today before we close the session? Yesterday's session was not uploaded in YouTube. I have uploaded immediately. Okay. okay, let me show you that. And I'll share the link, okay? So who is this? Are you in the WhatsApp group, Upendra? Is it Upendra? Oh, yes. Oh. You are already there in the WhatsApp group, right? I, have, I, I remember that I have shared in the WhatsApp group also. 14th. Uh, this is mock interview. This is mock interview. Can you share it over here? Okay. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you should have got a notification. Please, you know, subscribe and turn on all notifications. Okay. Please subscribe and turn on all notifications. You should have got a notification yesterday. Okay. Anyways, I'll share the link now. So this is the session yesterday. I uploaded, you know, when did I upload? You can see somewhere over here. See, July 14th. Yesterday only I have published this. Anyways, I will share this. Uh, demo session three, July 14th. This is the yesterday's session, right? I'll share it in the in our WhatsApp group as well. Okay. okay. But you know, subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you will get that uh, notification as soon as the session is uploaded.
Any other queries, guys? Any queries, guys? Okay, I'll take your silence as no. I'm pausing the recording, guys. And we'll have we'll meet our, for our next session on Monday, right? So we'll have these sessions from Monday to Saturday. Okay. And we'll have our next session on Monday. And one more thing is next weekend, I'll give you one ass uh, assessment, weekly assessment. Okay. You will receive an online test and, you know, which will be having uh, 15 multiple choice questions, which you should complete in 15 minutes. So in that way, we'll be having weekly assessment. All right. So I'll share this weekly assessment over the next weekend because, you know, all the concepts are not covered yet for the weekly assessment, week one assessment. All the concepts are not covered because we started in the middle of the week, right? We started this batch from Wednesday, isn't it? So all the concepts are not yet covered. I will cover, you know, I will share you one weekly assessment, which would be having 15 multiple choice questions to answer in 15 minutes. All right. So any other queries, guys, before we close the session for today? I'll first let me pause the recording. It is getting lengthy. Any queries, guys? Okay, for those who are watching on this YouTube channel, so thanks for watching and have a nice day. If you want to enroll for this live training, right? So only first 10 videos will be uploaded as public sessions, public videos. Okay. Thereafter, once we start the actual tool, they will be uploaded as uploaded as a private video and shared to those who can who join the live training only. Is it clear, guys? The first 10 sessions only will be uploaded as public videos. And once we start the actual tool, uh, even after starting JMeter tool also, first two sessions will be uploaded as public videos. Thereafter, they will be uploaded as private videos. If you want to enroll, please, you know, WhatsApp me on this number. Contact me on my WhatsApp number. Here is my WhatsApp number. And thanks for joining and have a nice day. Group also. Every time, but somehow I missed it this time. So, you know, if anyone is planning to purchase a new laptop, prefer to buy an i5 laptop with 7th generation and above. And you know how to check generation, right? Let me repeat it. So go to your task manager or you will see on the label. The generation also will be mentioned in the laptop label. If not, you know, if you uh, if you are looking at the display models, right? You can see over here. If you go to task manager and if you see this, right? This is this, the 9 represents generation. Clear, guys? This 9 represents the generation of this lab processor. i7 is the processor model and this is generation, guys. So, you know, be clear about this. This is not 7th generation, guys. This is i7 is the model and this is 9th generation. In i7, this is 9th generation. Clear, guys? Some people get confused with this. Okay. So, and next one is understood, guys. Someone, I think, you know, asked the same question now also i7 and 7th generation and adding it to not. No. So this is 9th generation. My laptop is a 9th generation processor. Clear, guys? And this number tells you which generation processor is that. Right? And prefer to buy a laptop with minimum 8GB RAM. Don't go for a MacBook because load runner doesn't support. You cannot install load runner directly on a Mac OS. So please don't go for Mac OS. That is another thing. And maintenance is also very costly. Maintaining a MacBook is very costly, guys. Okay. The, all the spares will be costly. Maintenance will be very costly. Even AMC also will be very costly. And, you know, I personally suggest you know, Lenovo laptop. It's up to you. Your choice. But don't go for a slim laptop. Because slim laptop models have heating issue. Okay. This will have heating issues. Unless until you... Use the laptop always in AC. So don't go for, don't go for slim laptop. Clear guys? They will be costly first of all, as well as they will be having heating issues. Then why did you may ask me, why, why do we have slim laptops? Right? They are good to use in AC or in offices where AC will be always on. Clear guys? So this is the laptop buying guide. And don't, don't go for, you know, 13 inch laptop also. 13 inch don't prefer. 13 inch laptops, display size laptops. Go for minimum 14 inch or 15 inch. Clear, guys? No. What about Ryzen series? 
what ryzen amd ryzen uh, amd ryzen is also fine okay, okay. i have ryzen 5 yes ryzen i am not sure about the generation and their performance actually i have never used that amd processor uh, you you know you need to depend on the reviews google review okay Google search for the reviews and you know uh, decide accordingly. And uh, regarding hard disk, five hundred GB is enough, guys. Okay, even a five hundred GB or two fifty GB hard disk is enough for your practice purpose. Okay, but if you want more storage, anyways, you can have buy a you know uh, external hard disk, SSDs, etc. So storage, you know, any any storage is fine. Any other queries regarding this laptop, guys? And please, you know, please prefer, you know, uh, like, uh, please prefer to have at least eight GB RAM. Okay, shopkeeper may say you that you know you can extend the RAM, but again you need to replace, you know, one of the there will be two RAM slots in laptop, or one one you know, uh, one inbuilt and one you know. Uh, nowadays, you know, most of the models are having one RAM slot inbuilt on the motherboard, and one for uh, expanding the capacity, right? So prefer something with something with uh, you know eight GB RAM minimum. Generally, there will be two RAM slots in a laptop. Understood, guys. So prefer you know try to buy a laptop with at least eight GB RAM, single module RAM, single module of eight GB RAM, so that in future if you want to extend, you can add eight more GB to make it total sixteen GB. Clear, guys? Because you know uh, Windows or eleven will take more RAM from than Windows ten. Isn't it? Most of the laptops nowadays come with Windows 11 operating system. Isn't it, guys? It will take more RAM compared to Windows 10. 2 or 3 GB will be taken by operating system itself. So don't buy laptop with 4 GB RAM. 4 GB RAM will get, you know, like, uh, will be very slow. Again, you, if you want to upgrade, right, again, you know, you can go up to 8, you know, you should have equal RAM, equal RAM in both the slots. That is another limitation. It is always recommended to have equal RAM capacity in each slot. So if your motherboard inbuilt RAM is 4 GB, right? You, it is always, you know, you can uh, uh, safely add four more GB only. Understood, guys? So better buy a RAM with single 8 GB RAM module. Understood? Any, any queries here? Guys, say yes or no, please. please yeah. So don't prefer, you know, don't go for slim laptops. Okay. Another important session based on my personal experience. I'm using a slim laptop and it's uh, having horrible heating issue. You need to buy a laptop fan also along with that. Or you should be always maintaining AC for slim laptops. Okay. I'll stop it here, guys.